it's a sunny day in Bangor and um, we were just coming out um, just to, for a wee bell and um, I was springing out of uh, the pontoon. This is when you actually spring out and our next door neighbour sort of said, what are you doing? Because he didn't really understand what we were uh, working on. So um, I've come around to the fuel pontoon and I thought what would be a good idea is just to show you how to spring your boat. Um, although this is a, a straight pontoon and obviously we're in a slip, um, the, once you understand the principles, you can just work it wherever you want to work it. But it's just a useful idea and it's particularly useful uh, when you've got a longer keeled boat because if you can um, start your turn as early as possible, the better. So we're at the fuel dock and what we're going to do is we're going to set the boat up so we can spring it. Now normally for springing, um, it's a technique that gets the boat away from the dock so that you're not rolling your fenders along as you go forward. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off all the lines on the boat except two. Normally for springing we probably only have one but for our own convenience because we're going to be in a forward spring and a backward spring we're just keeping the lines on. They're going to be very very slack. It will be as if we only had one line on the boat. It won't interfere with the demonstration but it just makes our life easier. So if you're doing this for real you'll be doing it when you have one line on the boat. We just happen to have two for our own convenience. Right now that we've got that cleared up the first thing you've got to do is make sure that the boat is fendered up all the way along, particularly at the front or back, depending whether you're springing forward or springing backward. Um, I've got a bow fender on, I've got a fender up at the end. And when the boat hits the spring, either the bow or the stern, depending which way we're going, will move in tight against the dock, while the other end of the boat will move out from the dock. Once the boat is pointing in the direction we want to go, we can just simply drop the spring line and go. So it's a very, very useful technique. But the key is to have the lines off, the line you have is fairly slack, and to have fenders everywhere. You must have fenders or you're going to scrape your fiberglass off. It's that simple. So if we're going to spring forward, if we're going to bring the bow of the boat in against the pontoon, we have to have a fender there and a fender here so that when the bow of the boat moves in, the fenders press against the pontoon, not the gel coat. If I was springing backwards, if I was bringing the boat backwards, this fender here will be squeezed against the pontoon and the front of the boat will move out that way. This line is what the boat is pressing against. As the boat presses against this, its stern gets pulled in and since the stern's coming in, the front goes out. One of the key things you must have is the lines must be able to slip off the cleats. I know that sounds backwards, but you don't want to spring the boat and then find you're firmly secured to the dock. That's not how this is going to work. Once you've got the boat where you want, this line has to be able to come off the cleat quite easily. So just put it in a loop and it's easily removed by just either putting it through or lift, reaching down with the boat hook and just lifting it off. So no cleat hitches, no big knots, no piles of ropes. So I'm going to do the uh, forward spring, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the boat in slow forward tick over. Now what's happening now is the stern of the boat is turning away from the pontoon. Right, should we do the forward spring now? Sorry, the rear spring, you're going to go backwards at this point. I'm going to go backwards because I want the nose um, to spring out from the pontoon. Right, so rudder in neutral. But it's... Rudder's in neutral. Yeah. And now I'm just going to go into reverse tick out. And if I just turn round.
So that's basically how you do springing. So the next question is when should you do springing? And before we answer that, we're just going to take the boat back to the slip and we'll see you there. Well, we're back in the slip now, and as you can see, here we've got room. We've got the boat fendered up so that when we do the springing maneuver, if there's any issues and we lose control of the boat for some reason, and it pushes into this other boat beside us, then the fenders will protect the boats from each other and make sure that there's no damage done. The room you can see is useful to us. We couldn't do the springing maneuver if we didn't have this room. For instance, when we were in Conway, the gap between the boats was so tiny that we couldn't spring there. In that case, it was straight in and straight out because the gap between the boats was literally about that. The slip we were in was really too small for us. So if you're going to spring from a slip, you will need some room because the boat is going to move out either at the front or the stern, depending which way you're springing. One of the problems we have with this slip is this triangular piece of wood down here. And the reason it's a problem for us is that when we spring the boat, if we're springing the stern in, the stern comes in and it hits this triangle before we've completed the spring, which means that the spring doesn't get the bow out as far as we want it. Now we have a solution to it, which is quite straightforward, and it's <laughs> move the boat forward so it doesn't hit the triangle anymore. Um, that gives us another issue, and as much as we can't use this cleat down here, because if we do, it'll bring the boat back again and we will hit the triangle. So our solution for it is very straightforward, we use the middle cleat and we run a line from the middle cleat to the back fair lead and we use that to do our spring. Now there is an additional problem with that and we're going to just have a look at that now. So what we do is we take a standard mirroring line. This particular one as you can see has a, a loop spliced into it and what we do is we put it over one of the horns of the cleat and we then walk this backwards to the rear fair lead and I just need to go aboard now and cleat this up. Right, so we've got this onto this fair lead and what we would do is we'll have moved the boat, boat forward, prepared this as our spring and when we do that the stern of the boat will be able to come in to this flat piece of pontoon missing that triangle which means the spring manoeuvre will work as we intend it to work. It won't get caught on that and it won't stop. It's a bit of a peculiar thing to have to do, but it does work. Now, one of the things about using a spliced line like this when you're putting it on these cleats is you've got to be careful that it only goes over one horn of the cleat and then lead it backwards like this. And the reason for that is that when the boat goes, I want the boat to be able to come past this line and literally just pull that off so that the line comes with us when we leave the pontoon. If we're not careful, that can happen. And if that happens and we go off, the line is staying behind because there's no way we can get this line off while the boat is moving out. And don't forget at this point, the boat will have no lines on, it will be underway. We can't stop at this point. So you've got to be very careful when doing this that you don't catch the whole cleat. Now, an alternative would be to take the other end of the line, which is not spliced, and put a very small bowl in on it. A bowl in which is far too small to fit over the entire cleat. Like that. And that bowl in cannot go. It can only fit on one side of the cleat. It cannot fit on both sides of the cleat. So at least that way you have a chance of taking the line with you. Now, when we're going astern from this slip, then I find that we 
don't need we have less of a problem with the ropes and i find it sufficient if beverly just pulls in the nose that is sufficient because obviously you can spring by using the engine but you can also spring by just pulling on a rope the advantage of using the engine though is if you you can get a much bigger angle you can spring out a lot further on the engine method than you can by just pulling the rope however when i'm going backwards from this slip i don't want my turn to be too tight because i've got the possibility of hitting another boat so that's why um, going astern we just pull the rope and that is enough so one of the things that we've not discussed is the wind um, so for instance if you want the wind is going to take your boat the way you want it to take your boat then don't spring just let the wind do the work for you but when you are considering the wind always make sure that you're considering the front of the boat rather than the back of the boat because the front of the boat is what will move with the wind first at the back of the boat has got a rudder to oppose the wind and the middle of the boat has got a whopping great big keel but the front of the boat has got nothing to oppose the wind so it will always fall away from the wind first so just remember that well that is the basics of springing and that's how we do it here on Salty Lass. Uh, if you have any comments or questions do put them below and we'll do our best to answer them. Hopefully we have managed to cover most of what you needed to know. But we'll come inside now and the kettle is going on because it is cold out there. I don't know what it looks like uh, on the camera but it's not as warm as it looks. So that's it for now and we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.